Hello there, a very warm welcome to this particular episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. According to the 2019 International Trade Center publication, globally, the cultural and creative industries generate about 2.25 trillion US dollars of revenue and also create about 29.5 million jobs. Here in Rwanda, the data from the National Institute of Statistics indicates that the industry grew from 5 million US dollars in 1999 to about 5 500 million US dollars in 2019. On this particular episode, we take a look at what the government of Rwanda is doing in order to unlock this sector's potential. I will be your host, Naringwa Fiona Muthoni. The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted all sectors in the world and the cultural and creative sectors are among the most vulnerable. Rwanda's Minister of Youth, Rosemary Mbawazi, shares the role that this particular industry plays in the country's economic development. Since the lockdown, uh, it has disrupted the, uh, the culture and creative, creative industry. Their businesses, you understand their businesses mostly work in a uh, having concerts, having uh, exhibitions of their products, and also having uh, performances where it includes many people online or physically. And so this closure, the lockdown, uh, in terms of prevention to prevent ourselves from COVID-19, it has really affected uh, their businesses and also subsequently uh, affected their cash flows and thus the revenue streams have been affected. Uh, if you look at the movie, uh, if you look at the concert or the performances, or any of these creative uh, categories, creative art uh, categories we've talked about, you would find that you cannot employ less than 200 at one seat. And uh, the 200 people, most of them are young people. So besides the industry itself or the performers themselves, they're a lineup of many people that would be supported all through the, the chain, but also the other auxiliary services or support services, for example, transport, um, uh, accommodation, uh, restaurants, there are many uh, uh, services that come to support the creative industry, and this increases its multiplier effect. But besides that, we have statistics that show, um, according to the International Trade uh, Center publication of 2019, it was showing that globally um, this sector generates about was generating about 2.25 trillion and about 29.5 million jobs globally. And if we talk about Rwanda in particular, the data from the National Institute of Statistics uh, confirms that in absolute terms, the industry grew uh, from 5 billion, which is uh, Rwandan francs, which is about 5 uh, million uh, US dollars in, 20, in 1999, and it grew to 468 billion, which is about 400 or 500 million US dollars in 2019. And this, this represents about 5% of uh, contribution to the GDP national earnings. So you can see uh, it has a big impact. But besides that, uh, socially or uh, in terms of passing the, to the next generation, uh, this uh, creative industry has an opportunity or is a channel where we can pass on uh, to the next generation the values, uh, the, the, the beliefs, the culture, the language to the next generation. So it's very important. This sector is very important, especially with its smart player effect. The Atranda Ubuhanzi Project, Imbuto Foundation, and the Ministry of Youth and Culture recently launched the Cultural and Creative Industry Recovery Plan. A total of 30 impact-oriented and sustainable projects from stakeholders in the cultural and creative industry are set to benefit from the fund. Uh, the fund is coming to respond to uh, the discussions we had with the, uh, the creative and the cultural industry. Uh, we had several meetings. We had a survey as a ministry with our stakeholders. And we were discussing with them what are the key challenges that we are facing right now and what would be the government interventions with their partners. So the, one of the challenges uh, or among those three that I've mentioned uh, that was raised was finance. And that's how we came up with our partners, a fund to support uh, what they're doing and also support the innovative ideas, the innovative uh, business or project that would come to, re come to respond to challenges that they are currently facing. And this is here where we are working with the Imbuto Foundation and partnering to make sure that this fund comes and supports innovative, innovative ideas that are going to uh, revive 
at the sector, especially in young people uh, that are in this sector. And this is what is coming to do to make sure that we revive their businesses through supporting the innovative ideas. We launched last year uh, the program called uh, Art Rwanda Wuhanzi to promote cultural and creative industry, especially uh, engaging young people uh, to be in this sector so that they can create more decent jobs and also fight the unemployment. We have a guiding principle of investing first and foremost in people. And um, as you know, in, uh, as a country, we have also uh, under the National Strategy for Transformation more of uh, engaging young people to create jobs. So we, we have this program under uh, our youth empowerment and uh, we would like to help the young artists, but also uh, the artists in general. Uh, in this period of COVID, we know that uh, people are facing uh, challenges and problems. So it is in line with the Rwanda uh, COVID-19 recovery uh, program. The Creative and Cultural Initiative Grant, the way it works is that there is a pool of, over, of about 300 million Rwandan francs that has been made available. The way that's going to work is that there is an application process that we have already gone through. Um, and once that application has been filled as of now by over 600 particulars, so it's not one individual who's going to receive that money. It's going to be broken down into, uh, I believe, 30 different uh, grants of 10 million each. And the goal is to not only say one individual is going to collect that money, but the project that we have accepted through the application shows that you are going to help the community around you at large to make sure that that uh, grant is used for the widest uh, amount of people possible. The cultural and creative industries are becoming a key sector in the global economy as consumption shifts from purchases of physical products to the pursuit of unique experiences. We had a conversation with some of the beneficiaries from the project to understand what they will be bringing into the sector and how they benefited. Uh, they provide us the training about how to natural our talent and making money from our talent uh, and the skills about what we are doing, about the creative, creating some things new and about our, our career as what we choose to do. First of all, I loved it. I used to do it as a hobby, but in me, I understand that I need to, there's something I need to express to the public. There, there is something I need to, give to the public. Then I found that art painting is the most, uh, the most dominating thing in me that I can use as a channel to transmit the message to the public. And uh, again, it's because nowadays I'm doing it as a, a job. It's my daily job, yeah. I choose to do this art because first of all, it's because I have a talent of creating some clothes. I also choose this because I really like it, and uh, it's uh, like it uh, reflects what I like and it express who I am. It helped me to show the world what the culture of Rwanda is. Because the clothes that we do, it's clothes that reflect the Rwandan culture and telling story about Rwandan culture and African culture in general. The contribution that I'm going to add to the economy of Rwanda is about creating employment, especially for the youth, uh, and just giving the tax to the government. Uh, I also want to make uh, just this Made in Rwanda trend and make uh, Made in Rwanda knowing everywhere to the world, just to make our country known and just to make the increase of money from the outside of country here. Yeah. What I'm expecting, because nowadays it is when the government is putting too much effort in uh, the creative industry. So I think my art is going to be the one contributing to that in the creative industry. Because it is the most art can be, uh, do create the big, big economic income. So in the income, 
I will be able to give it will benefit to me, even to my country. To ensure sustainable development of the creative industries, new business models must be explored to allow artists and creators to get a fair share and fully explore their creative talents. Bill, the project officer, shares why it is important to create a showroom in one of the busiest areas in Kigali. Also, Geraldine Mutesi breaks down the impact that the Art Rwanda Obuhanzi project has had. The Art Rwanda Obuhanzi showroom was uh, officially opened in May 2020, but the initiative itself uh, dates back in 2018, where um, Imbuto Foundation, along with the Ministry of Youth and Culture, collaborated to go around the country and select a group of artists um, in many different categories to help them showcase their art and help them also become independent in their craft. So the showroom has been opened since um, the beginning of May and we hope that um, to get a lot of clients and to get people to come here and help um, the Rwandan creative uh, industry and artistic industry to evolve. Where um, we want to showcase their art, but not only showcase them in the sense that we are helping them um, give them the window to the world, but what we want is for them to eventually become independent in their craft, understand the business behind it, and evolve so that they can grow on their own. Here we have 70 creatives in total in six different categories. We have film and uh, cinema, cinematography and photography. We have music and dance. We have fashion, like people who make this jacket that I'm wearing right now. And also, as you can see, um, the painting and sculpting uh, categories. Uh, out of those 70, they've been around the country. They've uh, helped with certain initiatives that Imbuto Foundation has worked on. But overall, right here, we have 70 people who bring their art and then we try to sell it to the public at large. So the showroom, as you can see it here, and the incubation center we have in Kimurura as well, um, are here to help the artists in any way we can. So we provide all the materials that they need to create their artwork. Um, and then we have this space where they come and sell their part. What we do is uh, what I would call a service fee or something of sort so that a place like this one can run independently without um, depending on donations or anything like that. So the, the money that we make from uh, the sales of this location, a certain percentage of that goes into maintenance fees to make sure that this place can sustain itself. When we started the Art Rwanda Obuhanzi, it doesn't mean that uh, there was no creative and cultural industry in Rwanda, but we wanted to uh, really engage more uh, uh, young people, uh, identify new talent, and also help them to nurture these talents. By end of June, uh, in the records we have, uh, these young people managed to really um, uh, uh, to really have an income uh, worth to around 55 million of Rwandan francs, and which is really something that they are they could not imagine that will happen. So first and foremost, uh, you have to, to trust the young people. And secondly, you have to help them to orient their ideas. Then you engage them. So they, will, they really, it, uh, the Art Rwanda Uvuhanzi showed us that they have good, in, uh, good, and, uh, uh, good ideas and also a commitment to contribute to this country, uh, country's economy. That brings us to the end of today's episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. If you have any questions, suggestions or feedback, feel free to tweet us at CNBC Africa or you can tag me directly at Fimuthoni. Thank you so much for watching. You are with me, Naringwa Fiona Muthoni.